you're talking about ransomware and the the risks of ransomware and now mm -hmm. that hackers are selling a tool that will allow script kitties to deploy and distribute their own ransomware to collect upon so really you have to do preventative backups and ongoing mm -hmm. and she hit it right there yeah. Backups. That is your only surefire protection against ransomware. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Period. If you haven't done your backups, you're not safe. Mm -hmm. You think you're safe on Linux, you're not. You think you're safe because you've got antivirus, you're not. And let me explain that. So you've got a server mm -hmm. and it's got file sharing on it. Mm -hmm. And it's Linux. Linux is not susceptible to ransomware infections, so you are safe, right? I hope so. Well, I don't think so now, oh. the way you're saying this. <laughs> but I'm Joe Blow no. user <laughs> comes in with his laptop, right. sits mm -hmm. down, plugs it in, or goes on the Wi-Fi and starts messing around and, mm -hmm. oh, there's an email. They find one of those really cool um, Unicode um, phishing mm -hmm. scam emails and click on the link that they think they're going to epic.com and instead they get a piece of ransomware that goes into their computer and the first thing that ransomware does these days is it goes out on the network mm -hmm. Rem now don't think in terms of a virus because yes your linux machine is not going to catch a virus mm -hmm. in the same way that a windows machine is your windows machines that have antivirus on there like eset smart security or endpoint security mm -hmm. something that has uh exploit blocking as opposed to just antivirus yeah. um they're probably not going to get infected but what happens now, okay, Joe Blow user sit, sitting down at his computer, he gets mm -hmm. the infection on his computer, it goes out silently, he doesn't even know what's happening, right. on the network, and it finds that Linux server. The Linux server can't catch the virus, but the right. Linux server has a, re a repository of all of your business's files, right. True. all of your documents, all of your kids' photos, all of your videos, all of your email, everything is stored on that Linux server. Mm -hmm. and is accessible by the infected Windows machine. So now it starts encrypting those quietly. Oof. And Linux doesn't say anything about it. It doesn't mind because mm -hmm. you can encrypt files. That's fine. Mm -hmm. You can edit your files and it will, it's just file storage and it's happy. Your NAS unit is now susceptible because it's accessible by an infected machine. So folks say, you know, I have antivirus on my computer. How is it possible that m the files on that same computer that has antivirus got encrypted oh well, did you realize that the computer in the back room that you haven't used since mm. 1996 is running because it runs this software that software and right. it has no anti-malware and it got the infection and it crawled out over the over the network and encrypted any mm. files that it found on the network including the linux server including the Linux. files on your windows machine that has an antivirus that's completely game changing <sighs> Completely. Like once, tragic. Absolutely. And once we realize mm -hmm. the, the, the paradigm of how these types of ransomware malware infect, if you will, or encrypt, mm -hmm. we realize, oh, it doesn't actually need to infect the computer that it's encrypting. No. It just has to be able to access it through the network. And it could be anywhere. You give your Wi-Fi password to somebody or somebody cracks your Wi-Fi password and they get an infection, you get a router that has the default username and password and mm -hmm. a bot it compromises it and installs ransomware on it. Well, what if you're using public Wi-Fi, right? Because there's so many places you can go these sure. days. Mm -hmm. For sure. Like there's restaurants, libraries, public Wi-Fi everywhere, right? All you need is one person to sit down with right. that program that we said earlier, and it's, right. it's horrible. So then the user says, oh, well, on my public Wi-Fi, I don't have access to my home server, so I'm safe while I'm there. Mm -hmm. But remember... And this is, this is what I do, is try to educate and, and okay, we've got to think this through. So you're on the library Wi-Fi, you get that infection on your laptop, mm -hmm. then you and it, it lies dormant. Until you get home. <laughs> you get home, and it starts looking for stuff, but... That's creepy. <laughs> then you get home, and you plug it into your Wi-Fi there, or your Ethernet there, mm -hmm. and it says, oh... There's an Ubuntu computer over there that has file sharing enabled, and oh, it looks like that's where you store all of your family's files, and the reason that you've shared it is because you want your wife to also have access to it from her uh, computer, and you to have right. access from your laptop, and blah, blah, blah. So let's encrypt those. 
and now all your files are lost. So right. backing up a little bit, backups are your only surefire protection. Now, how do you know how frequently you should be backing up? Like, what would you say is a safe schedule for backup? Your schedule is based on how much time passes before what I would lose in a catastrophic failure becomes un unimaginably painful to me, mm. right? Right. So if, if I take... If I get my camera and I take pictures once a month and I load them onto my server, mm. then I'm okay to run a backup once a week. Oh, yeah. Now, if I'm a professional photographer and I take wedding photos every Saturday yeah. and, and you know, I need to make sure that those are backed up and in a right. safe place every single day. Mm -hmm. you know? So that's, that's a different case. So you have to think about you know, what would happen if I lost everything. How far back can, right. I, can I lose? Right. Because and if I backed up last Saturday, I'll only lose everything that happened between Saturday and today. Right. If I'm doing it properly. So for, for like regular home use, probably weekly is good. Weekly is probably good. Make sure you're doing something like RDIF backup mm -hmm. so that those backups now are not touchable by the malware. Yeah, so okay. keep them separate. Yeah, and, okay. or you know, some people will take uh, an external drive and, and actually you know, run the backup and then turn it off or unplug it is, mm -hmm. is even a better thing or move it to a safety deposit yeah. box or you know, something to get it off of the network. Mm -hmm. uh, but you, know, you can also, if it's Linux, for example, you could have it so that the sharing does not allow access to the backup drive so that even if that malware en encrypted the files on the master folder, um, the backup itself can't be touched. But then you need RDIF backup or something so that if your backup then runs and overwrites all the files on the backup, you can still go back a day, mm -hmm. right? Because that's the other case is, oh, well, my backup just copies the files every yeah, day. Yeah, then that's going to be... Overwriting <laughs> any files that change. Oh, dear. So then you lose everything anyways, so... It's tricky business. It is. Yeah. Hey, if you've got any questions about the security of your environment, please email me. Uh, you can get us at live at category5.tv. It's a very serious um, issue and a, and a mm -hmm. terrible time for novice users to try to figure out, you know, am I safe? Are my files safe? Mm -hmm. And right. Sasha said it, back up, back up, back up. That's your only protection against this kind of thing in mm -hmm. reality. We need backup. 